Legacy media journalists lose their mind after a conservative MP compares Justin Trudeau to a dictator. We will do a comprehensive fact check on this claim to determine whether or not Justin Trudeau is, in fact, a dictator. I'm Kenneth Malcolm, and this is The Kenneth Malcolm Show. Hi everyone, thank you so much for tuning into the podcast today. So I will admit, when this story first came out, it was so stupid that I didn't want to acknowledge it and I didn't really want to talk about it. There was an exchange in the House of Commons where a couple of MPs were sort of speculating and talking about whether or not Canada was a dictatorship, whether or not Can uh, our Prime Minister was in fact a dictator. Now, the spirit of the debate that was going on in Parliament was fairly lighthearted. It wasn't during question period. It was during the uh, order paper updates after question period. And you could tell by the sort of of jovial attitude amongst the MPs that were talking about it. They, they weren't making a serious claim. They were sort of talking tongue in cheek. However, the legacy media blew it out of proportion as they tend to do whenever there's a conservative who says something that the media deems to be controversial. So that is what happened here. A whole bunch of legacy media journalists uh, lost their minds and accused the conservatives of calling Justin Trudeau a dictator. So here is the headline over at CTV. It says, Rachel Thomas, MP for Lethbridge, called Trudeau a dictator last week. And it quotes Rachel Thomas saying, a ruler with total power over a country, especially one who has gained it using force, Thomas said. Now you can tell that that quote is taken out of context because she's not actually calling Trudeau a dictator in this claim. In fact, if you look at the clip, she was just reading a dictionary definition of what a dictator means and kind of saying, using that to say that many Canadians feel that their country is being run by a dictator. So this was in response to a liberal question put to Thomas to get her to respond to a comment made earlier earlier by a conservative MP, another one from this one from Saskatchewan West, Brad Redekop, who blasted Justin Trudeau's use of the Emergencies Act to clear peaceful protesters. So Redekop said this, to call in police forces to crush peaceful protesters under the jackboot of the prime minister's basic dictatorship. And then the next thing he said was, and at the same time, another dictator is currently using his war machine to crush our friends in Ukraine. So, so his use of the term another dictator to describe Putin uh, implies that he's calling Trudeau a dictator. And then that, that use of the term, uh, he crushed peaceful protesters under the jackboot of the prime minister's basic dictatorship. That, of course, was in reference to an idiotic comment the prime minister made 10 years ago, uh, talking about how he admired China the most and saying that he, the thing he loved about China was the fact that their basic dictatorship uh, can be used to just kind of jig the economy around and make it go green on a dime. A uh, very stupid comment by the prime minister back then. And so the conservative MP was kind of just like rubbing in how stupid of a comment that was by comparing Justin Trudeau and calling him a basic dictatorship. Regardless of all this context, regardless of the sort of tongue-in-cheek nature that the MPs were talking about, the media lose their minds. There was that CTV story. We also had Steve Chase from the Globe and Mail tweeting this. Worth noting, conservative MP Rachel Thomas, nee Harder, she, she used to be known as Rachel Harder. Uh, she got married over the summer, so she's now Rachel Thomas. Uh, Rachel Thomas on Monday in the House of Commons said that many Canadians hold the view that Prime Minister Justin Trudeau fits the definition of a dictator. She did not cite a poll. How dare her give an opinion without citing a poll, according to Steve Chase over the Globe and Mail. Uh, he was not alone, of course. Rosemary Barton from the CBC reacted. She said, criticize the liberal NDP deal all you want, but this is irresponsible rhetoric coming from someone who was duly elected six months ago. So, so Rosemary Barton doing her best impression of a hall monitor, uh, scolding and lecturing politicians uh, for their rhetoric. Interesting how that only goes one way. I don't, I don't recall Rosemary Barton scolding and lecturing Justin Trudeau over his irresponsible rhetoric uh, when he said that that unvaccinated people don't deserve to be in our society and that we shouldn't tolerate them. Uh, but alas, uh, that scrutiny only goes one way from the CBC. Next, we have Don Martin from CTV commenting, saying, what a crazy thing to say. Makes the whole caucus looks bad. Charles Adler from Chorus Radio wrote this. Who among conservatives running for leadership will renounce the irresponsible? Every Canadian school child is getting 100% clarity on what a dictator is. Hashtag Vladimir Putin. When will the Conservative Party of Canada hold itself to the intellectual standard expected of a 10-year-old? And there's Charles Adler just doing what he loves best, which is just having really, really emotional over-the-top takes uh, where he uh, 
decries conservatism and and schools conservatives just like the rest of the media. We also had liberal MPs jumping in. So here is Mark Gerritsen, the MP for Kingston in the Islands, saying it's quite disturbing and frankly an insult to Ukrainian people that Rachel Thomas MP and Brad Redekop would suggest the Prime Minister of Canada is a dictator similar to Putin. Likewise, Catherine McKenna, former Liberal Cabinet Minister, said, we just had a free and fair election in Canada, suggesting the opposite because you dislike the Prime Minister is completely irresponsible and demeans the office that this Conservative member is privileged to hold be better. And finally, this is quoted from the CTV story. We have the University of Lethbridge professor of political science, Trevor Harrison, saying, and this is a quote, if Thomas was taking a course with me, I would have to give her an F for the course. Well, sort of letting the cat out of the bag there that a university professor would fail a student because he disagrees with her personally. So, so that is a standard apparently over at the University of Lethbridge in political science. If you have a view that the teacher doesn't agree with, you get an F for the course. Uh, again, saying, saying the quiet part out loud over there at the University of Lethbridge. Okay, so, so here's the thing. We said we're going to do a fact check on this claim. In order to do a fact check, rather than taking the rhetoric that the media and liberal MPs and, and the whole sort of liberal media establishment on social media are drumming up, uh, it, it's best to take a look at the actual exchange and the actual claims that were made. Because like I said, Brad Redekop, the MP, made the claim that Trudeau used a jackboot to crush peaceful protesters under his basic dictatorship. That's obviously tongue-in-cheek in reference to an older claim that Trudeau had made. And then the, 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 the only part that you could say is that he was comparing Trudeau to Putin because he said, and another dictator is doing this. And that word another implies that, that he is making that comparison. However, it was Rachel Harder that was the sort of target of all the scorn. So let's look at what she actually says in the House of Commons. This is a clip that is a little longer than the one that was circulating on social media, but it's important because it provides all of the context that we need in order to do a good fact check. So here is Rachel Thomas, used to be Rachel Harder, in the House of Commons last Monday making this statement. I'm wondering if this member can comment on whether or not she agrees that the Prime Minister of Canada is a dictator in a democratically elected parliament where we had an election not only six months ago. Does she agree with the rhetoric that came from the previous member? The Honourable Member for Lethbridge. The Oscars were last night. Mr. Speaker, uh, thank you for the question. Um, dictator. I, I just did a quick review um, in, uh, in the dictionary. So according to o the Oxford Dictionary, a dictator is a ruler with total power over a country, typically one who has obtained control by force. There are many Canadians that would believe, that would hold the view that this does apply to Mr. Trudeau, the Prime Minister of Canada. And it is up to... I apologize for using his name, to the Prime Minister of Canada. And, it, and it's actually up to the Canadian people to determine that. And they'll be determining that at the next election. Now, here's, here's the problem with liberal logic, is that liberals, they like to make other people responsible for a problem that actually isn't their own. I'm not the one that made the statement in this House. Why am I being forced to answer for it? But the Canadian people will answer in the next election. So you can see the sort of liberal over-the-top theatrics, like how, how dare they call our prime minister a dictator? After all, we are in this parliament, this democratically elected parliament. Well, well, here's the thing about democracies. Just because you vote in an election doesn't make you, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't guarantee that your society is built on the values of a Western liberal democracy. Things like freedom and openness and tolerance. Just because you have an election doesn't mean any of that. There are fake elections all over the world. There are elections in almost every country. So, so just being a democracy isn't really enough. You need the, the sort of small L liberalism as well, which is what many would argue that Justin Trudeau is lacking. And then you can see that Rachel Thomas is, is sort of taking a lighthearted approach to all of this. They're holding her accountable for something that someone else said, which is also incredibly worth noting. So, so, so the claims being made in and of itself are disingenuous because it wasn't her, it wasn't Thomas that made the original claim. It was a different MP, and yet she is being asked to defend it and speak to it. And then we have the second broader issue, which is that every Canadian prime minister is inevitably, invariably compared to a dictator. Why? Well, because of the structure of our democracy. We don't have the same checks and balances. We don't have the same separations of power as other Western liberal democracies, for instance, in the United States. They have a very separate 
distinct branches of government. The executive is very distinct from the legislature. The executive is the office of the president. The legislator is the Senate and the House, and then the judicial branch, which are all separate, right? In Canada, those are all sort of merged together. You have the prime minister who leads the executive. When they have a majority government, they also lead the legislature the legislative branch in the House of Commons, and they appoint those judges to the Supreme Court. So so, so you don't have the same kinds of separation of power. So prime ministers can amass a great deal of power. Prime Minister Stephen Harper, in an interview last year with Joe Lonsdale of the American Optimist, said this exact same thing. He said that even when he commanded a minority government in Canada, he had more ability to get things done than U.S. President Barack Obama, despite the fact that Obama controlled both the Senate and the House of Representatives at the time. That is correct, because in Canada, we don't have those same separations of power. And that is why time and time again, the media and politicians have called former prime ministers, including Prime Minister Harper, on many occasions, as we'll go through, they've called him a dictator. So here at True North, we had our researchers come up with all of the instances that members of parliament called Prime Minister Stephen Harper a dictator during Harper's time in office. So here we go. We had Ron McKinnon, who is the Liberal MP, still the sitting MP for Coquitlam, Port Coquitlam. He tweeted this on March 5th, 2014. He said, Harper's dictatorship for democracy coming to an end, question mark. And then he linked to a far left blog. We had Olivia Chow, former MP for the NDP party in Toronto's downtown riding of Trinity Spadina, according to a tweet from Chris Fox. He wrote, Chow going after Harper hard. Parliament is about democracy, she says. Are we living in a dictatorship? Question mark. Next, we have Elizabeth May, who's a former leader of the Green Party, and she is the MP for Saanich Gulf Islands out on Vancouver Island. Here's a piece in the Thai from October 2013. Elizabeth May, how to stop Harper's elected dictatorship, the Green MP on the PM's dangerous decision, opposition tactics, and rustlings of hope in the Tory bench, uh, Elizabeth May is quoted as saying, we are living under an elected dictatorship. This is a very frequent reoccurring theme, this term, an elected dictatorship. Next, we have Wayne Easters, a former Liberal MP. Back in 2010, he said straight out, this is a quote from the House of Commons. We got it from Hansard. He said straight out, he's a dictator, referring to Prime Minister Stephen Harper. We had a Conservative MP in response say, he just called the Prime Minister a dictator, Mr. Chair. Is that parliamentary language? Do you allow that? So so again, this, this whole debate back and forth of the opposition calling the Prime Minister a dictator is nothing new. Hedy Fry, who's a former Liberal MP for Vancouver Centre, likewise said the prime minister behaves as if he is a dictator. This likewise is from Hansard. So this is something that she said in the House of Commons in the official transcript of a debate in the House of Commons. Likewise, also in the House of Commons, Carolyn Bennett, who is liberal minister of mental health and addiction, she said, leaders who want to make the rules are called dictators. This is a test. Will the prime minister accept the Canadians and their parliament make the rules and just restore the long form census now? So again, there was a whole hullabaloo over Harper changing the census. And yes, many, many people at the time called him a dictator for changing the census, including it looks like liberal MP and now cabinet minister Caroline Bennett. So again, this tradition of calling the prime minister a d dictator is nothing new. And aside from liberal MPs saying it, there are also many examples of commentators, people in the media calling Stephen Harper a dictator. So here, Stephen Taylor, a conservative analyst, points this out that there is a little bit of a media bias because Rosemary Barton, who was cr clutching her pearls over the idea that, that a conservative MP would call Justin Trudeau a dictator. Well, lo and behold, a couple of years ago, back when Harper was in charge, Rosemary Barton had a very different tone. She tweeted in, in a sort of jovial way, uh-oh, Bob Ray just basically said this government is a dictator. So it was totally okay for Bob Ray to do it back then. He got a pass, whereas now when a conservative MP is doing it, it is a threat to democracy and the worst thing ever. Likewise, the Globe and Mail had a tweet saying, introducing Canada's minority dictatorship, Stephen Harper's opportunity to use prorogation. So again, lots of accusations. We have uh, Pam Palmeter, who is an Indigenous activist and a professor over at Ryerson University, she tweeted this, Women against Stephen Harper, time to remove the dictator and restore legitimate government. Likewise, Michael Harris, who is a columnist over at the Hill Times, who had a very severe, severe case of Harper derangement syndrome. He hated Harper so much. He wrote a book called Party of One, Stephen Harper and Canada's Radical Makeover. Again, this accusation that Stephen Harper was autocratic, that he was a dictator. We heard it time and time 
in time again. Farley Mowat, a celebrated Canadian author and poet, he wrote that Stephen Harper is probably the most dangerous human being ever elected to power in Canada. That was an excerpt from a book. So again, and, and here's another piece from Michael Harris writing over in the Narwhal, Harper's dictatorship for democracy coming to an end. That was one that the liberal MP uh, linked to before. So, so again, very common. And it wasn't just Harper. It wasn't just Harper. I remember back in the years of Jean Chrétien, Jeffrey Simpson, who is a former columnist for Globe and Mail, very blue chip thinker. He had a book out that said exactly this. He called Jean Chrétien the friendly dictator. His book was called The Friendly Dictatorship. And this is a synopsis of the book. Is Canada a dictatorship, albeit a friendly dictatorship? In this thoughtful book, Jeffrey Simpson argues that the Liberal Party's re-election to a third majority government must raise the question, is Canada in danger of becoming a de facto one-party state ruled by an all-powerful leader? And again, he's alluding to this idea that we don't have the same separations of power. And in times like the time that Jean Chrétien was elected, when there wasn't really a strong opposition party because the right was fractured, there wasn't really a government in waiting, there wasn't a strong opposition, and therefore you could take away that we lived in some something that resembled a dictatorship. So despite all of the hand-wringing and all of the pearl clutching by the liberals, by the legacy media, there's actually a lot of discussion and thought around this idea that the Prime Minister of Canada has too much power, that we don't have the correct and the proper separations to protect ourselves from a prime minister that goes rogue, a prime minister that wants to amass power, that is power hungry, that wants to punish people in his country. And to Rachel Thomas's point, many people in Canada feel that we are at that place right now. So here at True North, we also came up with a list of eight times that Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has ruled Canada by decree. So this idea that someone abuses power, that someone takes advantage of the fact that we don't have the same separations of power, Justin Trudeau has done this time and time again. Here are some examples. So here we go. Back in 2019, it was real the prime minister and senior members of his staff and cabinet worked to pressure the former justice minister, the former attorney general, Jody Wilson-Raybould, to interfere in a criminal proceeding against SNC-Lavalin. Of course, SNC-Lavalin is a big donor and a big supporter of Justin Trudeau. And the liberals, the ethics commissioner at the time, Mario Dion, found that the prime minister had broken conflict of interest laws by attempting to interfere. It doesn't exactly sound like a liberal democracy, does it? Next, using an order in council to evade debate on the gun debate. Likewise, Trudeau was able to bypass debate in the House of Commons through an order in council that effectively made 1,500 types of guns illegal. He just banned guns without going through the proper parliamentary procedures. He, he likes to evade parliament, this guy, Justin Trudeau. So he also prorogued parliament back in 2020. There was an investigation in the committees dealing with the WE charity scandal. Remember that? They were investigating the prime minister. They were investigating the fact that members of his family received half a million dollars for speaking engagements whilst the Liberals also awarded a multi, multi hundred million dollar sole source contract from the federal government to the WE charity. They were investigating whether or not that was a conflict. What did Trudeau do? He prorogue parliament. He ended it all. He decided that he didn't want the scrutiny. And so he killed those committees proroguing parliament. Again, remember when Stephen Harper did it, everyone screamed foul and called him a dictator. When Trudeau did it, the media just sort of shrugged their shoulders. Now we're getting into COVID-19. So many of Trudeau's COVID measures were seen as draconian, authoritarian, and yes, something that a dictator would introduce. So he refused to offer a timeline for lifting federal mandates. He suspended debate on government spending for two years during COVID. He barred unvaccinated Canadians from boarding planes and trains domestically and international. Canada is the only country in the world with such strict and drastic steps. And he used public health orders to fire unvaccinated public sector workers employed by the federal government or working in federally regulated industries, including the Canadian Armed Forces. So I, I alluded to one of these, but I want to go into it in a little bit more detail. Because in March of 2020, Justin Trudeau tried and failed to introduce sweeping COVID measures to give himself unlimited access to spending without parliamentary approval. So Trudeau said at the time that the proposed sweeping new powers to let the government spend money without parliamentary approval were needed because the coronavirus presented an exceptional situation. Those include broad new powers to authorize the cabinet to spend money until the end of December 2021. Remember, this is in March 2020. And the Trudeau government tried to slip through a bill that would allow them to spend money without oversight till the end of 2021. So we're talking about nearly 18 months. And in some cases, without any limits at all, without having to put their proposals to a vote in the House of Commons. This is quoting from Global. It says this, the proposals are highly unusual because the power to tax and 
spend are powers that belong to the Parliament of Canada. By removing the need for parliamentary approval, the proposed measures would eliminate the ability of MPs in a minority government to vote for or against him. So again, eliminating the entire idea of Parliament. So all those Liberals who were so outraged over the accusation that Trudeau, that, that, that you could even suggest that this guy's a dictator in a democratically elected House, that it was a democratically elected House Parliament that Trudeau was trying to bypass to just push through his spending uh, as, as much as he wanted. Moving on, Justin Trudeau's hateful rhetoric. He has an open intolerance towards unvaccinated Canadians. We all know the quotes. We all know. We have all heard Justin Trudeau talking about the unvaccinated. He called them extremists. He said they don't believe in science. They're often misogynistic. They're racist. And he then posed the question as to whether or not we should tolerate these kind of people, whether or not we tolerate living in a society like that. Who, who talks like that? Who talks like that? Does he sound like a dictator to you? Well, you be the judge. Don't take it from me. This is what Bill Maher, the American comedian, had to say about Justin Trudeau and the rhetoric that he is using. I started to read what he, he said. This is a couple of weeks ago. He was, or maybe this is September, but he was talking about people who are not vaccinated. He said, they don't believe in science. They're often misogynistic, often racist. No, they're mm, not. That was not that, smart of him at all. Right. He said, but they take up space. Mm. And wow. with that, we have to make a choice in terms of a leader as a country. Do we tolerate these people? It's like, tolerate these? Now you do that's, sound like no, Hitler. That's, mm -hmm. that, that was... uh, and recently, he talked about them holding, holding unacceptable views. Wow. This, I'm yeah. surprised to hear that Trudeau said those things. You didn't see the blackface? I mean, he's... he's, he's uh, no, I'm kidding about it. I'm not... I'm not I mean, that was not a good look for him. No, that's bad. But, I, I, I mean, come on. I mean, that's, I think, what gets under people's skin. So, 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 yes, Justin Trudeau, in a democracy, you have to tolerate people. You have to tolerate people that you disagree with. And I'm glad that Bill Maher was there to point out the fact that, yeah, he, he does sound a little bit like a dictator in that regard. And now, finally, we get to the major issue that made so many Canadians come around to this idea that Justin Trudeau is not a Western liberal democratic leader. And that was, of course, invoking the Emergencies Act to clear peaceful protesters. He did this on February 14th, 2022. And of course, he famously did not get parliamentary approval to use police force to move peaceful demonstrators until the police had already removed the protesters, at which point he got his parliamentary approval and then he rescinded it a couple of days later. So not only did he use excessive police powers that are usually reserved for wartime in order to crush a peaceful protest, he also assumed new powers to freeze bank accounts, to have the bank account of protesters as well as donors arbitrarily frozen, lock their bank accounts, essentially just destroy their life to punish them for being on the opposite political side. And final, final example here is this NDP coalition. So as you know, Justin Trudeau was just elected with the smallest minority government, the smallest share of the vote in Canadian history. And counter to the democratic will of the Canadian people, he essentially turned it into a majority government by forming a coalition pact with the NDP, allowing himself to push through his own legislation without the fear of going into another election. So Justin Trudeau is using every single bit of power that he can, mustering it all together to assert more and more power in a country that already has a relatively weak system of checks and balances. So is Justin Trudeau a dictator? Let's get to our final verdict here on the show of this fact check, whether or not it is a fair claim to say that Justin Trudeau is a dictator. Well, of course, everything is relative. So is Canada a repressive authoritarian dictatorship? Not compared to, say, China or Iran, no. But compared to Canada 100 years ago, compared to Canada 50 years ago, 25 years ago, maybe even five years ago, well, yes, we are heading in that direction. We're experiencing the decay of our democratic institutions and our systems. We are experiencing increasingly authoritarian culture that punishes dissenting views and excommunicates those who do not comply with increasingly draconian police orders. Trudeau is overseeing a series of significant crises in our country, and his handling of these crises is dividing us and making us weaker. Canada is not invincible. It's not impossible for us to slide further and further away from freedom, away from our birthright, away from the things that our country was founded upon, and towards more undemocratic, autocratic policies and towards a dictatorship. So to Rachel Thomas's suggestion, which was really Brad Redekop's suggestion, that to many Canadians, they feel that Justin Trudeau is a dictator. Well, our fact checkers here at True North say that that claim is true. I'm Kenneth Malcolm, and this is The Kenneth Malcolm Show.